Thanks everyone uh, for joining us. Uh, my name is Kevin Anyango and I'm the co-founder of Mtandao Varsity. Uh, the platform is mostly to share uh, with young people what employers want. Uh, today, uh, I've got a guest whom <laughs> I know very, very well and I don't know where to start. Chibs, come on. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Uh, nice seeing you. Thank you. Nice to be here. Thank so, you. first of all, Kevin, thank you so much. Um, we, I think I haven't um, seen you physically probably since 2002. Oh, don't uh, say when that. We, when we finished high school. So, that already tells people how old we are. Uh, and it's such a pleasure Disclaimer. and an honor <laughs> uh, to be, you know, to be part of what Mutanda University is doing, like you mentioned, helping young people know what employers want you know, yeah, guiding them into the professional world. Um, in summary, I would say I am the founder of The Classroom Outside, which is an organization that, uh, um, that trains and coaches young people, young adults and adult adults um, on self-leadership, self-awareness, and um, other issues and other matters pertaining to leadership, um, as well as you know, becoming the best version of yourself. Um, when I'm not doing the classroom outside, I, I am um, an educator, I am a wife, married to Dr. Poriot, and I have two um, children who keep us working very, very hard. And um, I think in a nutshell, that's who I am. I'll probably share more about my journey, but I, I describe myself as a leadership and mentorship trainer, educator, writer, blogger, African optimist, well, all of that. But <laughs> she, uh, she, one thing you haven't mentioned is that you have worked you know, across the continent. So, you know, you live in the States, uh, you had a stint in Southern Africa, uh, you've done stuff in Eastern Africa. I mean, who does that? Apart from Elshiba. <laughs> <laughs> so you went to well, school in the States, isn't it? Yes. So maybe I can I can give a brief um, history, which actually led me to, to where I am now, right? Yes, I like so, gossip. Carry on. <laughs> so I, I started off, I mean, I grew up and was raised in Kenya. I went to school, primary school and high school in Kenya. Was very, very fortunate to go to very good schools um, in terms of, you know, primary school, Mutaiga Primary, and then... Um, high school, I went to Precious Blood, Riruta, where, you know, excellence was, um, excellence was the way, you know, was, was norm, was the norm. There was no other way of doing things. And I think it really trained me in two ways. One was, you know, if you're doing anything, you know, do it to the best that you can. And then number two, um, the, the idea of being a holistic person, you know, that you, you don't have to be just good in school or academics. You also need to work on your spirituality, your, your um, behavior and all of that, right? So I, I think Precious Blood gave me a very good foundation and I was very fortunate to then get a full scholarship after KCSC to go to the United World College, um, which was in New Mexico. Now the United World Colleges are, are 18 schools across the world and um, they train uh, young people on international education. We, we do the IB, the International Baccalaureate. And the idea really is that when you bring young people together uh, from different parts of the world, um, when you expose them to A, international education, but also intercultural understanding, that we can actually end up with a better world. And so I was, I was sold. I mean, and, and I, they didn't need to convince me. I was there for two years. I already believed in the power of education. I already was very keen on, on um, other people's cultures. But I think what UWC really did for me was um, two things. One, um, giving me a sense of responsibility that for the world to become a better world, a better place, um, I have a role to play and it's not about somebody else doing it. And then number two, that no matter how young I am, no matter how small I am, um, I do have a role to play and I have an impact to make. So I think those are the two things that I would say I took away from the UWC. And, uh, just, Shib, just, just stop you there. Um, so when you introduce yourself, you mentioned about leadership. Mm. And at the moment, the world is kind of yearning for that, isn't it? Uh, yes. That servant leader. Yes. And, and uh, you know, I'm just going to go, I'll, I'll go, I'll jump straight uh, into 
uh, topic of today. And I think as we discuss this, then we'll continue talking about experience and then we'll know why you're doing what you do now. So sure. uh, when I first talked to you about Tumtandao Varsity, uh, you mentioned to me uh, the uh, class, what do you call that program you're involving? The classroom outside. Right. So what is this exactly? So it's not just about people sitting down and academics. It's more than that, isn't it? It's, it's way more than that. And in fact, that's as the name suggests, right? It's, it's about what do we learn outside of the main curriculum? Like what do we learn outside of um, what is taught, what is in the books? And, and what do we intentionally purpose to learn for ourselves outside of your, the proverbial classroom? And hence the name, the classroom outside. And why this is important is that, um, so we are in school for a very short time. I mean, a very short time of our, of our lives. I would say maybe a third of our lives, uh, depending on, I mean, if you go all the way to PhD and become a, a professional career scholar, that's a different story. But the, the reality is that everything we, we learn in school and outside of school is, is to prepare us to become um, full versions of who we're supposed to be to serve a purpose in the world. And, and I found for myself that in as much as I, I was a very good student and I love school and, and, and I enjoy learning, um, a lot of what I've also um, become has been what I learned from other people, what I learned from my own experiences, from other people's experiences from, from um, what I see, you know, in the world, what I'm seeing on TV, what I'm reading in books outside of, of school, um, and even what I'm seeking to learn from the teachers who taught me outside of, of just what is yes. in the books, you know, learning how to be, not, not just information. So with the classroom outside, the goal is exactly that, is to equip, actually, right? It's to equip young people young adults and we say you know teens all the way from um 15 to 19 you know so that's the high school age and then just after high school all the way to to you know your first job you're in university all of that but but then again i realized and i'm an adult now as you are that this learning never ends right so you never you never get to a point and say that's it now i know everything i should know <laughs> And, and if you don't have that thirst, you know, if you don't have that hunger to keep seeking knowledge, to keep um, asking yourself, okay, so this relationship didn't go well, what might I have done differently? Um, you know, or I'm carrying, carrying a heavy burden in my heart all my life. What is it that I need to do? Do I need to seek, I don't know, coaching or whatever it is. So that's, that's the whole basis of the classroom outside. And we do this through one-on-one -on -one coaching, mm -hmm. but also through group sessions. Right. And at least I keep calling you Shibs. I should call you Shiba. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. But so you talked, you've just mentioned learning how to be. And yeah. uh, for those people that have just joined us, uh, this is Mtandao uh, Varsity, which is a platform uh, to share soft skills. And today I am with uh, Elishiba Msengeti for yours. And uh, the discussion for today really is about uh, communications, how to present yourself. Now, Shibs, so learning how to be, uh, I've been very fortunate myself uh, uh, to employ uh, people to be part um, of uh, interview panels. And most of the times people rely on their qualifications, mm -hmm. but that's not what really what employers want. Employer wants you as a person. You know, by the time you come for an interview, that means we like what we see on paper. So we want to see you as a person now. And you're talking about learning how to be. Communications. So if I've never been employed, if I've never been outside classroom, uh, in all, 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 all my experience just based on classroom, how do you talk about communications and why is that important? Communication is king, right? If for someone to, to get to know who you are, um, as a person, like you've mentioned, a lot of it, if not all of it, is based on, on what you're communicating to them. So obviously your school credentials, your academic professional credentials already communicate something about your qualifications, right? But, but um, the reason even people are shortlisted and interviewed is precisely that, is because um, whoever is, is um, looking to give you the opportunity, which could be an employment opportunity, 
or a scholarship or a place in a university, right? Um, they want to see what they call a fit. Are you fit for the for the job? Are you fit for the environment? And many times, and it took me a while to understand this, people are looking for somebody who they can probably get along with or work with. Um, if you're entering at an entry level or at a, at a level where you'll need to be trained, people are looking for do you are you do you have a learning attitude can you be trained yes. you see um people are also looking at the rest of their team so they i mean if the whole team is already um i don't know maybe super noisy or super <laughs> um efficient then they're looking for someone who's equally efficient right because you you you're going to come and be part of a team and so it's, it's very important, I think, for people to know that when you're going for an interview for whatever kind of opportunity, that um, you, you might um, be rejected in the end, not because of something, you know, that we can put a, 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 um, a point on, but probably because what you communicated was not attractive to the person who was and you know it's very subjective but that's the reality of the matter right so so communication is very key and and by communication we i, I mean I, I think we'll talk about um the non-verbals as well right so spoken how you speak how you present yourself but non-verbals people say all the time you won't have a second chance to make a first impression yeah so it's i mean i think we could go on about maybe how you dress grooming and all of that and i've grouped them into five categories right so um your your energy what we call your aura what's your personal aura what's the what's the energy around you that's number one then number two grooming okay number three dressing yeah and then um number four your your spoken verbal communication and number five is your non-verbals, right? So your non, uh, um, sorry, the spoken one. And the, the last one is actually your written communication, which comes after you've probably either gotten the, the role or the position or the scholarship, but also continuously, right? As you continue to seek those opportunities, yes. your, your how you write um, becomes very, very key. So those are the five categories that I would group it into. And if, if I choose just... Well, I mean, you put it very, <laughs> it sounds very easy. So if you, you've mentioned something about uh, how to communicate, well, uh, the verbal part of it, you know, where you, you should be very clear what you communicate to people. And uh, this leads me to my question. Sometimes most of, and uh, this platform, uh, El Shiba, is mostly uh, for those people that are looking for opportunities or, or, um, or want, uh, want to go and start their own ventures. Mm -hmm. and, so the ability to be able uh, to to speak clearly, you know, and then express your ideas is very, very important. Yeah. And these are things that you cannot learn in school. They're things that you develop, isn't it? You know, as 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 as, as time goes. So my question mm -hmm. uh, to you is, how do they develop uh, the attitude or or that um, ability to be able to speak clearly and to express yourself, you know, clearly to uh, to, to your team? So I think the, the, I like the, the way you framed the question, which is how do you develop? Because we, we, we are often told what you need to do, but not how to develop it. I think a very easy one, first of all, is this, a lot of this information is actually out there, is on the internet. If you have access to internet, if you have access to a library, a lot of this information is there. Um, but but the, the basic thing I would say is um, you, you, also, you need to actually watch people who you find to be good communicators that's that's an easy one yeah how do they articulate themselves what is the posture you know if if when you look at um i watch cnn news a lot i watch bbc news a lot for example just you 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 look at the posture that the presenters are are, are having there's something that they do that will make you take them seriously that will make you focus on what they're saying so so key is that is um, trying to to watch even just from the news from the people that you find to be very clear communicators and that could be maybe from your place of worship or it could actually be even your your 
if you're in a university or wherever you know the the people that you are the leaders in that situation that you you find to be um, clear communicators but number two the, is that um you communicate to be understood right whatever you're saying the idea is for you to pass a message and so it's not about because i think you can get caught up in do i need to have a fake accent do i need to be rolling my tongue you know a certain way um do i need no you you need the purpose of communication is to communicate right so you 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 ask yourself if i'm i'm giving this speech if i'm introducing myself and you have about 8 seconds to make a first impression will the person be able to understand that my name is elishibam singeti i'm here um to speak to you about personal presentation ta 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 or am i swallowing my words so that it's very unclear what i'm saying right yes, yes. Now, now number 2 is um it's it's about um actually having a prepared um introduction for yourself so to speak like there are things that you are comfortable speaking about it sounds very silly but it's i think it it actually has a lot of value like if you you're going to meet up someone who's potentially going to give you an opportunity anticipate the questions that they might ask, they might ask you so that you have a prepared answer words have a way of disappearing just when you need them yes. do you know what i mean like <laughs> yes. they just go and, and suddenly you're thinking in your mother tongue or whatever yes. so pre- prepare i mean in terms of um, what you think you might be asked um rehearse 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 in front of a mirror and rehearse in front, record yourself in fact now with the with this gadgets that we have yes it, you can actually record yourself and you'll realize that there are some things you do like do you use your hands a lot do you blink a lot you know do you um i don't know shout is your tone okay ask seek other people's opinions and not just um your peers but if there are other people who you know are probably older or more experienced you can have them do a mock interview with you um so that they can tell you you're speaking you know too fast too slow so it's it's all those things it's about clarity and the point of communication i cannot emphasize this enough and could it, communicate. could you touch something and uh, so the other day uh you know larry mado uh you know works yeah. in the states now okay and um he did uh, his first uh, uh work in the states and he, he came out and he, the way he was speak was different from the way he was speaking 2 years ago and, and people started mocking him um but yeah. i live in britain myself now and uh, mm-hmm. i don't talk like this when when i'm talking to my to my dad so what is the essence of accent uh depending on your audience and who you work with because i i think most of the times uh people get a lot of slack uh you know for example when you move countries and 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 you start speaking differently but what people do not do not understand is when you communicate you want people to understand you your audience is different so um, and even news room if you go to if you look at uh, most of the journalists you know when they read news is different from the way they speak uh you know on a day to day basis mm-hmm. so what's the relevancy of accent or or to be able to to speak clearly uh the the example you've given of Larry is a, is a great example and and I genuinely think people are being too tough on Larry I think people might be a bit jealous of Larry uh but that, that's my personal opinion and here's why um Larry is communicating to a global audience Larry is now employed by an American uh, um you know company um Larry is now like you said living in the US his audience is not just Kenyans as it was when he was here So the 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 reality of it and I have an example of a case where when I was in the US I was asking for water in a restaurant and I kept asking for water and the waiter kept saying I'm sorry ma'am we we I don't think we have that and I was like I'm pretty sure you have water and he said no we don't and until my friend who's actually from Bhutan but had a better American accent um said no she, she well she wants water and the guy said ah Ah, water <laughs> yeah we have that do you want it still or you know whatever right and the the point i mean i was also doing it to to prove a point because you know i'm i'm, I'm i mean i was like i'm carrying you know africa on my yes. back here um but but the point is that is is for whatever your audience is your your goal is to communicate and so long as you're you're not doing it to 
I don't know, to sound snobbish or to show off that, you, do you know what I mean? Like sometimes people yes. use an accent so that we can know that you're of a certain class or a, of a certain education status. The, the, the point of communicating at any point is for you to, to pass on a message. And so there's, I don't think there's anything very wrong with adopting an accent if the point is for you to communicate to your audience. I do think there's something very wrong if you're doing it to, to prove, you know, status or to just imitate an ape, which sometimes is the case. And I do want to give a disclaimer at this point, which is, which I find it to be very unfortunate sometimes in, in our country, and I'm, I'm based in Kenya, but I would say actually for the whole world, uh, people tend to, to, to judge accents um you know to that anything that doesn't sound probably yes. either british or american yes. that is that yes. you now sound uneducated or your bush or whatever word that people use and i think that is such um i would say what's the word you know small kind of thinking yes the yes. reason people have accents if anybody has an accent in whatever language it tells you that they speak more than one language which in itself is a plus yes. right yes. so if someone has a uh, um an accent from whatever ethnic background whatever yes. country yeah it is not something to be ashamed of and it's not something if you're the employer or the person giving the opportunity it's not something to judge someone by yes. if but however if your accent is preventing you from communicating then you have to learn you know some right. some way of you know of being able to either enunciate some words differently pronounce some words differently yes um so that people can understand you not so that you lose your identity there's absolutely nothing wrong imagine what what a boring world it would be <laughs> if we all spoke, the same if we all spoke the same honestly yes. And, yes. and and nobody should be ashamed of of um, of how they sound um, so long as you're able to communicate yes that's yes. yeah uh, El Shiba, as I, I want us uh, to take uh, a different route now but before then uh, Again, again, a disclaimer. I mean, you've talked about nobody should be ashamed of how they sound. And in fact, one of the things that we can talk about here is about authenticity. You know, it is okay to be you. You know, if you can communicate well, that's fine. And this way, sometimes, again, I feel young people get a raw deal because they, because you don't have the experience, you do not know how to behave. And going back to Larry, my daughter, Larry is a very experienced journalist and he knows what he's doing. Uh, so I think it's just important for us to just to be clear that you know it's okay to sound who you are as long as you can communicate properly. And communicate is a very, you know, it, it's a ghost, uh, not ghost, but it's a, it's a big elephant. I mean, we, we will never, you know, we can talk about for, uh, you know, uh, the whole night here. But I want to move on to presentation. Sure. And, and, and uh, I know, again, when we discussed about this, uh, you mentioned something to me which I, I thought was quite important that uh, sometimes uh, people go for interviews or start speaking without actually doing their own research, you know. They, they, they don't know um, whether to carry a PowerPoint or not. So with your experience, and again, I say this uh, with a lot of humility because you worked in different, uh, in, in different setups, you know, African setup, you know, uh, the Western setup, you know. Uh, what, why, should we, why should we know how to present ourselves? Does it actually matter? It does. It does. Uh, you see, like I said, you have about um, eight seconds to, to make an impression. And, <coughs> sorry, um, it's not even just about making an, an impression. Presentation is, you know, is throughout, it's your personal brand. It's, it's your, um, you know, what does somebody see, think, feel when they see you? I'll give you an example. One of the places I've been very fortunate to work here in Kenya was Strathmore Business School, Strathmore University Business School. Um, then it was just called Strathmore Business School. It is one of the best business schools in the world, not just in Africa, but also um, one of the best institutions, I would say, in terms of forming the people who go there. So both the students and the and the leaders. So I was, I was working in the department called Executive Education. And executive education trains um, managers and leaders, you know, directors of boards and all those people, business owners um, on various leadership and management aspects. Strathmore has a dress code. It is not a suggestion. It is a strict dress code. And 
the thing is you know when you if you come there and you don't you hadn't read up on it you hadn't asked you know at 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 whichever point if you're going to go somewhere if there's you know somebody there try and call and ask them you know is there a dress code in that place or google google it find it sometimes the the, the company um, website will have that information um, but i would say in general air on the safe side like it's always better to be overdressed than yes. underdressed this is like rule number one i would say I, I don't think um well in any case let me come back to the story for, for for strathmore the thing is you know you had to dress formally there's like no sleeveless um tops for ladies um you know you if you're a young man no t-shirts your shirt needs to have a collar and things like that and i know i'm seeing some people even on this call who are either currently at Strathmore or former people from Strathmore and you know the, the dress code sounds very restrictive but the thing is once you're there there's a certain en environment there's a certain aura it looks like people are serious it looks like people know what they're doing we're not struggling with issues of cleavage we're not struggling with people's dresses are too tight do you know what I mean we yes. can actually focus on the business that has brought us brought us there why do I say that? It, it is so important, first of all, to do your research, I guess, um, into an organization, because again, it could be that the dress code is, you know, smart casual, but for whatever it is, you, you want to come off as respectful. You want to come off as decent. So, so I mean, nothing should, you know, should never, I don't think there's any opportunity or job that requires you to dress you know in a very tight outfit you know or something that is too revealing never i cannot think of any i'm sure there are some jobs you know that probably start later in the day that might require you to dress that way but for the kinds of of, of opportunities that we're talking about here you 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 need to obviously just think decently if somebody sees you what are they seeing are they is is it your body parts that are in their face first or is it is it you is your is your dressing also distracted you know, distracting because we can also dress very decently but the colors are so bright my god it's like christmas you know you're like a christmas tree um so there are colors that are encouraged your navy blues your grays your you know if you it, it's not that's not really there are places where your personality needs to come through yes. i would say at probably at work especially when you're seeking the, the opportunities or even in in a, in a university um you're looking for a scholarship you're looking to be promoted maybe that that's not the place like you have the weekend to do that so i, I would say you know err on the safe safe side of of dressing you know dress modest um you know trousers for for young men and i want to say this because young men now are wearing like piped trousers yes. i think there's a difference between fitted pants like that fit you well and piped piped looks doesn't look serious <laughs> i'm going to have a very hard time taking you seriously and yes. so there's, there's no need because you're almost wearing tights and they're showing me too much you know so so small things um like that i also see sorry to say this but i see again um young men and even older men wearing a suit and the label of the suit is still on the suit that's a, i mean really it's a big no-no even if you're wearing a, i mean i don't know a Giorgio armani suit or whatever yes. we never need to see um the label um another one i think for 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 ladies is you know is is your your the material even of the cloth that you're wearing how does it react with the temperature of the day is it going to start sticking to your body yeah how does it how does whatever you're wearing fit when you're seated you know when you stand up can you stand up and sit without having to pull it down because the minute i start pulling my skirt or dress down i'm already you know drawing attention to something other than probably what i would want to be communicating uh, um so so that there, there all those things your shoe needs to just you don't have to have an expensive shoe but it needs to be clean it needs to be neat it needs to be brushed or polished if it needs to be polished um and again safe colors there are very few places where you need to show up with pink shoes where you need to show up with 
you know depending on what your your job is of course because if it's if you're going for something industrial then you dress differently if you're going to be like you're you're a nurse you're a doctor you're working in catering uh, you're working in in hospitality you're working outdoors maybe with the wildlife service um you know different um you know jobs require different um dressing That's but it needs to look presentable uh, wow i mean as I, i like the way you've put it uh, <laughs> what do you tell people for example um when they say that it is not my my dress that's doing the work you know i i've, I've got the experience to do what i can do so you know leave me alone so, yeah how do you answer that then uh el shiba we we can't separate your dress from you we can't sep- i mean if you want then let's let's bring your dress to work because you <laughs> you 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 the whole of you is part and parcel of of your communication it's that that's what we are calling personal branding and and the and i think there are spaces for you to to try and be rebellious um i think you have to really read those spaces and what is at stake right what is really at stake what are you looking for am i coming here to make a point because if that's the case sure come and make your point but am i or am i coming here to um blend in with the culture of the, of the organization to to ensure that you know i'm i'm focusing on my work uh, you remember when you're at an organization you're also representing you're an ambassador of that organization or company yes. or institution or even business when it's your business and and you know think about um who would you want to trust with your business as a client you know what how do you want them to present themselves how do you um what are some of the things that you you want to see that will make you feel more confident in this person that's the thing the 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 and, and the the idea that um, I, and i get this my dress my choice um i think it has its place but it it will come at it often will come at an expense at your own cost and you know you need to find out you know where is the place for that and i'll say this even for um it goes down even to your hairstyle i mean grooming and all of that kevin yeah um there are, and and not to sound old fashioned but but again if i'm going to show up with i don't know pink hair uh you know big hoops you know just there's some things that are very expressive and they're looking they they are awesome they give you character but ask yourself is this is this what i'm going for like is this is is this the place for me to be expressing elshiba have you seen uh, elshiba and uh, you don't have to answer this okay you can pass so the governor of nairobi he posted uh, his attire the other day uh, you know with mask and it, it was interesting do you know what i'm talking about yeah right uh, what's the what's the question <laughs> <laughs> the question is So I I want to be I, I, listen I I don't want uh, this uh, to be political but to, you know the yeah. essence of from Tandao Vazi this platform El Shiba is yeah, is yeah. to communicate to young people in you know, what employers are looking for and yeah. and one of them is you know how, how you look you know how uh, your appearance is very important yeah. So the governor of Nairobi the way he was dressed uh, I don't know what function it was uh, mm. but you know it, it was it was quite disturbing really and he's not is in a position of leadership many people you know look upon him yeah. you know he's got an he's got an interesting story that some people find inspiring so my question to you is even in even if even if you're a leader you really have your opportunity does it matter how you dress it does but the, the thing is uh, the reality is that uh, more and more especially now in Kenya we are seeing um leaders i guess that are really pushing the the envelope and um sonko <laughs> sonko is one of them um and there are others right a- a- and you know without mentioning them you know people who either are, i mean are doing things that are out of the norm or have hairstyles or dressing or even ways of speaking that are outside of what we would consider to be you know quote unquote proper um the the thing about sonko though is that he he i would say sonko is an outlier I, I don't know that um that when I think of a governor of Nairobi that that's um you know 
the way he dresses is what comes to mind but i think for me what has been more of a disappointment and it's not to be political if he was dressing that way and still you know nairobi as a county is okay and you know and like your leadership is okay then maybe i would excuse that but we've had quite a number of challenges in nairobi as in many other counties uh and so i think for me for people like that it's i i i I go back to okay so what what is your leadership um bringing or bringing on the table or doing for those who elected you can you see that I see, I see that and that's not even wi- wi- the wildest of of his um of his <laughs> attires we've seen him dress you know more widely but I I really don't think that um young I think young people have to be smart and wise in terms of who they they want to emulate and um for what purpose right for what purpose do you, uh, do you really have that advantage um you know that you're already known um you've already made a name for yourself so if if i don't know jay z or somebody shows up dressed a certain way he's a, he's already made a name for himself he's not trying to make an impression you know who he is yeah but you're at a point where you you're still trying to get your foot in the door So I'm not going to to give you a chance because you you I mean you you, you came, appeared looking completely you know unprepared for whatever yes. the job was yes yes yeah? and it's, it's about uh, sending yeah. sending the sign it's, you know so what kind of signal you're sending um I, I'll go back to at, at what you're talking about um and I want you to do an etiquette you know and again I say if you have never been employed you know you you, you don't know um Uh, what is the norm in employment and and various companies ha- have got you know a different culture uh, mm-hmm. but for you as a person we talk about communication as well you know ability to be able to do research to know exactly what you're going for but something that people actually take for granted uh, is uh, being i want to use the word work ethics but it doesn't really match in today's topic it's So etiquette you know people talk about you know uh, eating etiquette you know eating habits um but when it comes to professional etiquette people tend to kind of ignore that and that's why people say you know don't mind about what, you know how I'm dressing you you know look at my ability to work but mm-hmm. but again i'm saying if you don't if you don't have the experience you you don't know how to communicate uh your professionalism or yeah. that you understand uh that uh you've got the etiquette so my question again to you shiba is then how Um, if you, if you if you are new into the job market you know how do you know mm. so the the and like you you've rightly said there's you know there's dining etiquette there's business etiquette there's um, social etiquette for professional etiquette you want to be personable but also professional you you it goes back to what i was talking about in terms of your the energy the aura the, the what what is somebody getting from you uh when they interact with you so um i would say again be respectful be friendly um you 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 always remember that especially when it's like an email or a text or something yes it could be forwarded it could be printed it yes. could be projected somewhere um so so when you when you think of that how do you want to be um you know what impression do you want to give what kind of communi- what what are you communicating i would say you have to be you know the, the politeness is very key there there are words like if you're going to respond say yes and not yeah you know use words and st- you know a lot of times you ask something and you at work and you you nod or you shrug or you use your words like if you have language and you're able to speak use your words say yes please if you don't know say i don't know but can you suggest you know do you have maybe a suggestion of someone who might know what the person is asking for or where they might find that information um 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 also in terms of um gossip are you gossiping about other people yes. that's really unattractive right? are you bad mouthing are you constantly complaining that the the lady at, who cleans the toilets never puts toilet paper i mean can you show some leadership and then be yes. the one that then puts the toilet paper do you know what i mean like yes yes um you know there are just some things that um wow. we we need to to leave <laughs> outside of of the work um of the workplace uh, you know if you're speaking um 
if you're speaking to someone who's probably more senior to you um again if you're meeting them for the first time you introduce yourself you're the younger person you're the more yes. junior person yes. stand up shake their hand introduce yourself using both names my name is Elishiba Msengeti I'm an intern here at the whatever you see and and eye contact as well unfortunately for many of our african cultures yes. we are taught that if someone is older <laughs> don't look them in the eye because it's yes. disrespectful um but again looking away sometimes makes you look shifty like you're trying to hide something so if you can find a place to look at like between their nose and the bridge of their nose or somewhere so you're not looking directly in their eye and you're not yes. blushing yes. um you know that's a trick to 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 use when you're being introduced you stand up um you know just small things like that and and you know the words that i see my 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 kids are very young they're in lower primary and kindergarten and they're now learning those words um sorry thank yes. you please yes. pardon yes. um um use those words we need to use those words throughout our lives yes. um whatever communication it is end with a thank you whether it's on email whatever it is because the person has taken the time to read your communication or to listen to you you can never you know be too thankful you know yes um yes. and then if you're called you know say yes as opposed to eh you know like just unprofessional <laughs> unprofessional you know carry yourself in a way that just shows you know this person um is is kind of is serious about their work and i would say this Unfortunately people are very polite and friendly to those who are above them or those who have um the power to probably I don't know promote them or whatever. I think what would set you apart is that you're polite, friendly, professional with everybody. Whether they are your peers or they are below you or whatever it is and then if you make it a habit and this is what I was I was talking about about you know holistic you know i like what you call the unity of the person so so when you meet elishiba in the supermarket i'm not yelling at people and yes. yet when you saw me earlier at work i was oh sorry thank you no like can you just be the same person yes. who is you know polite respectful and friendly and i'm not saying that now you know at work i'm now right at home i'm writing emails kindly pass the salt no but but if you've practiced being polite friendly you know kind it follows you all through and so you don't have to put on an act because we fail yes. with, when we start having to oh i have to remember oops i have to remember you know what i mean like make it a habit so that all around are you are you insulting people on facebook if if we look at how you're communicating if i go through your chats uh, uh, as yes. kevin you know, are you <laughs> like insulting people do you know what i mean like yes, who yes. are you all and, around uh, yeah. shiba El shiba wow i mean yes, goodness me i i i could just sit here and just listen to you the whole day i mean you're saying stuff that we take for granted ourselves but they really really matter and in fact you you remember something so uh through this platform i spoke to uh, eugene bugwa uh you know the guy who's creating being bahati now he's involved uh on creating saudi soul generation you know he's a super guy quite young and he told me that he's staggered sometimes you know people that he's never met call him bro like you know you're sending someone an email or a facebook message and say you know hi bro you know i've got a degree in communication can i come and do intern for you and he was telling me kevin I'm not his brother. I don't even know him, you know. And <laughs> and and that and, and that is a problem. You see, because once you call me a name I'm, I'm not comfortable with, I won't even read your emails. So, and uh, yeah. that is just uh, to illustrate your point or to agree with what you're saying, you know. Um or, or you even know, the word dear. People use dear a lot and throw it around, you know, thank you. Exactly. Dear. Yes. You, you know I've not given you permission to dear yes. me. You know yes. what kind we're not in that kind of relationship. Yes, yes. In fact, in Britain, yeah. uh, in Britain right now. You know, see British like call it uh, in dear darling. You cannot say that at a workplace. And in fact, there are people you know, talk about you know 10 20 years ago, you used to refer to people like that, you know, hello darling, hello dear, mm-hmm. or touching lady at the back and now they're in trouble. You know, and even um and I'm sorry to say this, Joe Biden, uh the current, you know, is going for president of America. Uh, some of things they used to say you know many many years ago that are out of context okay, but yeah. uh uh you know people are referring to that like you know maybe that's you know is a fan, is a different person look i i again i know we've been here for more than 45 minutes now and um 
uh, there's some that I cannot let you go without talking about, you know. And mm-hmm. and for those that are joining us right now, uh, this is um, Tandao Varsity School of Soft Skills. And on this platform, uh, we are talking about uh, those things or qualities that employers are looking for. Mm-hmm. And this we call soft skills, which, El Shiba, you mentioned, uh, we can refer to them as habits. You know, having a habit, you know, you know having, it's, it's not just about you being different at work, but, you know, being consistent who you are as a person. And these habits, you cannot learn them in school. They come with experience. And that is why it's very important for young people to start getting involved. Do not wait when you're finishing a degree to start looking for opportunities. You know, studying something at home as well. Ashiba, you hear at, uh, at workplace or corporates uh, throwing parties, you know, Christmas parties here and there. And, you know, you know young girls uh, or, you know, you, you forget that you are an intern and you go to these parties, you know, dressed like you know, you're going somewhere else. Uh, what, what do you tell those kind of people you know, or they're targeting you know, senior managers or you know they always say yes to clubs even now you know you see after work person, let's go to a club because you're in turn you want to be bubbly you know you want to you want to be popular tell me about that so first of all you know sometimes you can dress to kill and you kill your career my friend yes. you kill your career <laughs> yes i like that yes office office parties christmas parties um you know, team building, weekend getaways, um, evening cocktails, all those opportunities, all those um, scenarios. I, I go back to the same thing. Unity of, of, you know, of character, who you are. Yes, you can let down your guard in terms of, um, you know, you can be a bit freer, a bit more relaxed. But remember, you're, you're still, you know, your brand still holds um you you still want to be respected even post this party a party or whatever it is is only an event you know you have a whole um lifetime ahead of you hopefully at the organization or in your career so i would i would say first of all um this idea of trying to trap you know the senior manager or whatever it is please believe in yourself more than that believe in your abilities more than that believe in your in your um either your credentials or what you have to offer or your ability to learn because even if you don't have those credentials that you feel you need um to be promoted you you have a chance to learn you have a chance to improve yourself i will say this to to young ladies and probably to young men as well but especially to young women respect your more than that and believe in yourself more than that you 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 really do not need to sell yourself to be able to rise i know this is what everyone is doing or seems to be doing but you're not everyone and i can tell you um i've worked for for 11 years which is a very humble amount of time given i mean i i, I have seen people here who've worked at a very high level too years. but Shiba, you well know. No no no, 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 come I, on. no, 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 it's, it's good. No, no, people need to know, you know, because look, if, if you didn't have the experience that you have now, I want to be talking to you now, <laughs> you see what I mean? So it's, it's very yeah, important. I, mean, I thought it was because I am illegitimate. No, no, okay, I'm doing, no, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. <laughs> no, no, I get no. what you mean. <laughs> Listen, yes, yes. No, but, I think, I think it's important uh, for, for, for viewers to understand uh, that, you know, I'm talking to somebody with experience so that, you know, we can take seriously what you're talking about, you know. I will not to mention people that you work for, you know, that's entirely up to you. But for those that are joining us or listening to me, you know, El Shiba has worked at a very, very high level, you know, not just in Kenya, but outside Kenya as well. You do your research. Her name is El Shiba Msengeti Poriot. You can Google that name and you'll find out. Please carry on. So now that, <laughs> Kevin, now that you uh, prompt me up, no, but anyway, no. uh, the, the, yes, but, but, but thank you. Thank you so much. And I've just, I've been very, very fortunate and blessed. And the, 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 what I was going to say was that I have never really, and I say this truthfully, I have never had to, you know, um, cozy up to a manager for me to get a position, for me to get acknowledged, for me to get um, you know, a, a role or a, or a promotion. Do you know what I mean? Be- why? Because I, I have complete, you know, confidence that whatever my abilities are, what I'm bringing to the table, give me the role that, you know, that you feel I can serve best in and I'll keep 
improving myself so that I can make it, you know, to the next level. One could say, yes, I've been fortunate. I would say there have been myriad opportunities for me to try and do that. It's not for lack of opportunities. It's not that you don't see this, um, that you, you don't see other people might be getting favors because of that. It's a personal choice and I respect myself too much to do that. And, and at the end of the day, you remember, you, you might be used by this person and it leaves you feeling either wasted, leaves you feeling used. Um, you, you also get yourself into a, an entanglement, this is a common word now, yes. of, of um, you know, you only got to where you are because of certain favors. What happens when you fall out with this person? When, you know, when you, they're angry with you or they ask you to do something you don't want to do, then poof, there goes your your career, whatever it was. I don't think it's worth the risk. Believe yes. more in yourself than that. Value yourself more than that. Uh, um, work on building yourself, you know, and and the relationships are very important. Relationships are key. And and, uh, and I'll say this, it's, it's very important um, for your colleagues, both peers and below and above and we, whatever level, it's very important for them to connect with you at a personal level as a human being. Um, but, but at the same time, remember you're, you're not um, your colleagues first. If you do develop and become friends, that relationship is separate from the work relationship. Yes. And, I, and I want to mention this at this point. Um, now with, the, with WhatsApp, we post our status on WhatsApp, yeah? Everybody who has your number can see your status. Now, do you want everybody who has your number to see what you did over the weekend, how you drank, what you drank, what your friends, so you're spoiling even for other people, not just yourself, you know, to see, you know, the, maybe you've, you're angry with someone yeah. and you want to communicate, I want to communicate to Kevin, but I've put it on my status. So now the CEO of wherever is also seeing <laughs> all this. Do you know what I mean? Yes, so yes. I think wow. as, as young people, we have to be super careful um, in this era that we're very exposed. Your status is visible to everybody. Um, again, even what you're posting on social media communicates who you are. What is your profile picture even saying? You know, I see this funny yes. pictures that are just threatening like are you in a demo i had to i actually told somebody a young person i said your your profile picture is is making me feel like you are you in some demonic cult or something <laughs> or what is that picture because you are at a point in your life where you're looking for opportunities you tell me your name i see your cv I, i'm going to look you up yes. and then you have some bloody gory picture on your I mean, and your CV is saying something completely different. It's not about, we're not being judgmental, but the reality is it comes back again to this, the, what we call the nonverbal communication, which is yes. all around. And, and your, 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 it's, it's easy. Okay. We could, we should separate you, you know, from what you do at work and what you, right. But, but the reality is, especially with WhatsApp, where everybody yes. has your number, yes. I, think, I think people have to be a little bit more careful yes. unless you really genuinely like, are okay with the world seeing all of that. And, and, and that's also a choice, you know? And that's, that's okay if that's your choice. But, wow. but consider, you know, the impact. <laughs> And I, I think, um, El Shibu, you have said uh, very interesting stuff. And this, uh, this is the perfect way to end it up with social media. I, I know, uh, you know, President Barack Obama have said that if social media was there during his time, he wouldn't be present now because of things he's done. You know, you know, his past is like, you know, you know, he was a, you know, people don't know this, but you know, Obama was a, um, uh, not a disturbed boy, but you know, he, he was in trouble, you know, uh, several times. Mm -hmm. And he was saying if he was, if social media was around, you know, people could have found things that perhaps he wouldn't be very proud of. And his wife, Michelle, has actually said that you don't, you know, you don't see how it is on social media. You know, mm -hmm. you know, if you if you've got something and you know that controversial or you've got facts, go and tell the person, especially if you're young, you don't say as uh, as it is on social media. Social media has got a different, uh, it's, it's a it's a platform for different things, and I, I, I again, 
let me give an example again you know i'm not trying to be political it's just good for viewers and people listening to me to understand this like the other day uh this girl uh pauline joroge that i uh, was appointed um mm. as uh, i i don't know, i don't know the details she she was a, a a woman a lady not a girl but right, carry well, on. right. Uh, she, she, okay. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that she she was appointed um uh to be part of a particular board in kenya isn't it uh sure. tourism board yeah. yeah and 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 somebody went out and fish out um status he wrote uh, goodness know how many uh, how many years ago yeah. personally it doesn't matter because that was her then and people do change but it just shows what social media can do to us you know i'm sure the you know she'll be fine i know she may have other opportunities but it is an example what we put on social media you know you know it represents who we are and it doesn't matter when you're writing it so just be very very careful on on on, on what you put on there yeah Ashiba, and i mean that for that on. example also kevin i think um there's been some backlash you know with people saying that you know that that was too harsh on her that yes, she shouldn't be judged just with one tweet you know yes. she has so much else going for her which is why she yes. qualified to be appointed on the board in the first place um and i mean we can debate all of that but yes the, the truth is that um i think you do want to be on the safer side again um i i will probably qualify this with you know it depends on what your i guess what your career or field is um because again if you look at um probably you know some activists um you know like Boniface Mwangi or yes. others um that is their core business is yes. to be controversial you know and oh sorry the lights have just gone off so i'm just going to turn <laughs> this uh you know well, it's a live show i cannot control this actually but this is do a live show i'm so sorry yeah it's okay can you guys still see me well i can see you very well um i've muted awesome. everybody so they can't say anything but i can hear you carry on awesome um so so uh, you know if if that's your your work or that's your your job is to be an activist is to be controversial then yeah that's okay but if that's not really what you're yes. you're going for then i think you do need to be a bit more careful i don't think that hr uh, or recruiters or or even and i keep saying this people looking for scholarships and fellowships because again after your your first degree you you probably be seeking fellowships scholarships yes. um you know graduate trainee programs or whatever it is so so um they i don't think they'll judge you just no. by a post or just by something that you you said somewhere um but it does contribute to you know to how they might view you or some yes. questions that they might that they might um they might ask and how do you avoid that i think how to avoid that is to make sure that you do have a safe space do you ha- you have a group of friends or family members where you now vent out you know where you now share you know those other parts of you yes. that you cannot put out in the public a lot of times we are we are lashing out and sharing tmi i eat too much information in the public because we don't have a circle of people to share that with so so i think it's very key it sounds like it's not professional um advice but it actually is in the sense that when you have those people then you're able to share the information that needs to be shared in yes. those smaller circles and 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 then um you know for the public you share only what's necessary and this this circle of um of people or of friends and they could be family members are also key for for helping you to have a lens also to yourself i can't emphasize this enough um um i think we 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 sometimes as i guess we and i mean young people um we sometimes miss out on um the opportunity to have friends or people who can actually be act like mirrors for us and and don't um uh, don't um underestimate the power of you know of of the people in your small network so to speak yes. these are the people who can can even pre-read an email for you um um one time i was when <laughs> as a head of student life at empesa foundation academy and sometimes i would write an email and i would actually take it to my boss then um to have him read it before i send it out to the whole school 
not because I don't think I'm a good communicator, but because I knew in some cases, maybe I'm angry with the students for something that they did. So I've written and expressed that, you know, anger there, or could have been, you know, something that I feel very strongly about, but I would give it to my boss just to read and, and have a second eye. And he would say, ah, no, 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 Shibs, don't send this email. Um, I'm glad that you've written it and you've vented, don't send it. Or, um, yeah, this is great. Just take out this paragraph at the bottom. Do you know what I mean? So, so don't underestimate. And for this case, it was my boss. In some cases, it's, it's, it's also, I even share sometimes it's like a cousin, even with yes. my husband, I'll share a, a, a message, like an SMS before I send it and say, what do you think? Does it sound, you know, is it communicating what I wanted to say? Is it too angry? Is it too... because you 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 can only sometimes you can only hear and see what you're feeling. You need somebody external to to give you you know another eye, an extra eye. Don't underestimate that. And while I'm there, it is there's never I think there's very few cases where you need to communicate in capital letters. I just wanted to put that up. <laughs> There's no, I cannot think of any, unless you're writing like a danger sign, there is rarely any reason for you to write an Shiba, SMS, no. WhatsApp, email, block so, letters. So, do you see, this is why, this is why, you know, I created this platform, because what you're talking about now here, you know, sometimes we don't, we don't, we're not taught in school like that. You know, some of us went to, what went to village schools, you know, there's some things that, you know, uh, come with exposure. And yeah. again, uh, this is why I created Mtandao University, you know, to talk about things that employers are looking for. Uh, again, yeah. a disclaimer here, and I think it's very important uh, for you and I uh, to be very, very honest. So mm -hmm. you talk about social media. I myself, I got my very, very first opportunity, uh, and this is 2009. Uh, somebody read, you know, what I'd written and, and gave an opportunity, and I started writing for Huffington Post. So mm -hmm. we, we, uh, I'm not trying to say that, you know, we should not write, you know, in fact, if you Google yourself, what do you see? You know, employers want people that have got passion, you know, and sometimes passion, we communicate passion through writing. And again, when you were starting this discussion, you talked, um, uh, you talked about communicating clearly. So mm -hmm. uh, I think um, uh, personally, I, I do encourage people uh, to have a passion or something, you know, to speak your voice write blog but as you said write things that you know you're accountable for yeah. if your mother reads it will she be happy with it yeah. you know and and the last thing that you talked about Elshiba, which i think again is very important is the ability to have uh, the circle of friends people that you trust you know yeah. uh, and you know some that may not be may, may not uh, may not be lucky to have to be married to uh, mr poriot you know that <laughs> You know, they, they, they can find some. They can find some people, either your, your parents or your brothers, your or even mm. friends that you can always share things with. And I think it's important, isn't it? It's it's very important to have those people and and to also be that person for others, right? So you're right. not always yes. taking from other yes. people. That's it's right. it's very important. I mean, and there are various roles. There's the, there's um, the, there's a cheerleader. You need you know you need a mentor. You yes. need a sponsor. And not sponsor the way we say it in Kenya, but a sponsor in the sense that you need somebody in your life um, who can um, vouch for you, who, when there's opportunities, will say, um, oh, yeah, I know Elishiba, she can do this. Um, and those people can be part of your circle. They could be at this level where you're probably just getting started in your career. Yes. They could, they could even be... Um, your former teachers, your former lecturers, your, your, they could also be uh, parents of your friends. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't, you don't have to look very far, but try and identify, is there somebody who can constantly be, or who can be this thing to me, you know, can be a mentor, sponsor. Um, and, and I say sponsor, and I don't mean sponsor the way it's used now. I mean sponsor in the sense that they, they help you um, they help to vouch for you and put your name on the table. Um, um, in terms of your friends, again, um, I think you, there's also that idea that um, we're in a competition, that if I get this, no, share those opportunities. When, when I, even when I got this uh, UWC, United World College opportunity, which I was talking about, um, we, many of us, I think four or five of us were actually interviewed from the same high school 
And I, I wasn't in any doubt that if I shared this opportunity, it means I won't get it. Have more, comes back to that, have more confidence and faith in yourself. And if you're a believer also in God, that if it's meant to be yours, it will be. Um, and, and I keep sharing those opportunities. The reason I went, my, my first job after, so I went to Wellesley College um, in Massachusetts for my undergrad. And and the reason I even, um, you know, my first job was at African Leadership Academy uh, in South Africa was because another friend was working there and she told me about this opportunity and I and you know at the time I was thinking I want to come back to the continent I want to come back probably home because I'm very close um, to my mom and my brothers my, my dad passed away when I was much younger but I, I knew that I wanted to come back home and I was of, of course also dating um, Korean then so who I'm now married to but there were many reasons for me to come back to the continent but one of them was I felt that I had a role to play in the country or in the continent yes. and I wouldn't have known about I had heard you know about African Leadership Academy but didn't know how amazing it was until I heard from this friend who had finished Wellesley College two years before my getting that opportunity took nothing away from her yes. she's still in South Africa now is a very senior partner in one of the consulting firms in South Africa and I mean has a global role so so and and i have many examples even for why i've been able to get the opportunities that i've gotten that you're talking about I, you know working for wings to fly equity foundation working for strathmore like i mentioned working for um impesa foundation academy people share these opportunities and i do the same and it has never taken away so don't be afraid of that yes. if you see something that looks good for your friend um, let them know about it, build others, elevate others. Is, even if you yourself don't have a job, but you see something that it looks or sounds like a fit for the other person, tell them, um, you know, share it with them. If they need you to practice, you know, with them, the interview, be that person. It doesn't, um, it doesn't take away from, from you at all let's not be afraid there's, there's enough opportunities for us in the world more than enough for all of us and 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 we, we don't need to to guard you know things so jealously sometimes we oh the power is back sometimes yeah. we we fear that so much that we we don't even um we end up not growing as well because let me tell you what when you're also selfish about sharing opportunities even other people around you will do the same if you're you you're also selfish about giving feedback to others you know kind feedback in a sandwich way where you start with positive negative then positive the same <laughs> the same um will be done for you you know and 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 i think when you're young sometimes you think um well i don't have much to offer i can't be a referee for you because i i don't have an experience yeah, but you can go through my CV, you can go through my cover letter and see if I have typos, you know? So so let's be each other's keepers, you know? Wow, I, I, I really yeah. like that. And I feel challenged, actually, you know? And I like you said that there's enough opportunities, opportunities for all of us. And again, for those people uh, that have just joined us or listened to us, uh, this is Mtanda Varsity uh, School of Soft Skills. And uh, the platform is uh, to share what employers are looking for. Today, I'm, I'm, I've been speaking to Elishiba Msengeti Poriot, and you, uh, she shared with us uh, the importance of communication. Uh, she talked about uh, uh, professional etiquette. And as I said, there's some things that we take for granted, but if you've never been employed, uh, you don't know how to behave. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I think this this way it's, it's a good time for us to end as you've said you know we share we share opportunities we look for each other's back you know uh it's, it's not a competition really you know and um i'm glad you've mentioned uh, some of the opportunities that um you've been involved with and i think it's i should say this again um Sengeti, that i do know a few people that you've really really helped uh, in terms of looking at the applications you know uh, i've got to mention oliver kazenga uh, who's right now in the States. I know you helped him a lot um, uh, with some of his opportunities. So uh, it's an example of, you know, when, when you help others, it doesn't mean that uh, your star stops shining. Mm -hmm. uh, Elshiba, your last words to young people listening to you right now. Wow. So um, first of all, thank you, Kevin. 
um, for this opportunity to to share you know what I know what I've learned with young people um, one is is like I said trust in your abilities trust in your credentials you you whoever you are now um, present that as best as you can don't don't uh, focus so much on what you don't have what you don't know because you can't change that but what you do have and what you do know present it in the best fashion possible if your cv is one page make that page clear make it you know a, a neat it shouldn't have any typos do you know what i mean make it if if your experience so far has been that you've been um running your family shop talk about that that is the experience that you have and it's the experience that somebody else doesn't have so so don't um don't un- downplay or underestimate the experiences that you've had <clears throat> and i'll say this even even experiences like teaching sunday school you know many of us have these things that they do um you and i went to to high school at about the same time kevin and and i was telling you i used i used to work i, I used to go actually with my mom um to um missionaries of charity home you know that was run by mother teresa sisters that that was was um in guba actually where we lived and um at the time i used to do it because you know because my mom was doing it and because i i enjoyed you know the singing the praying the sitting with those with the 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 people who are there living there but you have no idea how how much that experience first of all made me empathetic to people who are differently able how that um, actually built my spirituality because we would also pray and sing with the with the sisters um how much that actually enabled me later you know we we went and ran a children's home with with my husband managed it for a year which my mother in law used to run um before she passed on unfortunately and and you know i i I, you can never know what the experience you have now as trivial as minimal as it looks you never know it's building something in you and that's what i call you know the becoming part that everything you're doing going through both the positive and the negative is is adding on to who you are so present that in the most authentic way in the most respectful way respectable way own it um not in an arrogant way you know and and not with the uh, um i don't know in a snobbish way acknowledge also the the um, acknowledge the privileges that you've had if you have had privileges you know even for example if you're living in nairobi going uh, uh, you know you're living in a place with electricity and running water that is a privilege yes. acknowledge <laughs> that so how do i you know make the most of that privilege and then um so so that's one you know present yourself and whatever you have and whatever you've done in the most authentic clean neat way and don't be afraid of sharing it then the 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 second bit is the unity of of person who you are all around uh, it needs to be unified it doesn't need to be the same but it needs to add up if you if you especially you are, when you're at a point where you're looking for opportunities um people are going to look you up so just be a bit more careful in terms of what's out there are about you and and some of it a lot of it actually you can control especially what's happening on your social media what's happening on your whatsapp like i said how are you communicating i mean even i see like somebody writing very nice emails polite emails but when i when we are communicating on whatsapp you're now communicating with the um, short forms that i have no clue what you're talking about i mean there's no just make a bit more of an effort yes. the 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 this uh, the effort that it takes you to be polite the time that it takes you to be polite to be more professional will pay off it really will you know those relationships are long term it's not about making a fast impression it's about having a lasting impression that's what will make you thrive that's what will make you grow first impression is is fine great we've seen you know this is what you look like this is what you sound like but for you to make a lasting impression it's the habits because habits you know form character and and character then is what forms your reputation do you know what i mean like it's it it's uh, uh, um it one leads to the other so so 
work on that and then thirdly like i said um you know don't be afraid to be the one who also helps others to rise and don't underestimate what you can offer sometimes you what you can offer is literally i saw this in the newspaper can you apply or uh, you know whatever it is and 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 i'm saying this especially if there's and i know there are many young people who are probably feeling very discouraged because the economy of our country is is like that yeah and i would say you know what i've talked about in terms of your experience so far and what you can do turn that i mean that's that's your goal that's the goal that you have that's what you can use to elevate others that's what you can use to elevate yourself even as you waiting for this opportunity make sure that you you you're still growing yourself and growing others you this like i talked about going to the home we it's not like we were taking money there we were giving our time yeah and and you'll be amazed at how much you grow not just professionally but also emotionally mentally spiritually when you open yourself up to 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 that to to giving of yourself and learning from you know different experiences of other of other people it, then you become not just a better professional but a better human wow i mean el <laughs> shibai I just want to continue uh, talking to you I mean because the stuff that you are saying are actually what matter you know um you know employers don't really care about your degrees or masters it's about who you are as a person and soft skills are the habits what you have talked about here and those habits you know they come with experience um look i met el shiba as <laughs> on a school outing didn't we uh, it was a drama festival and and that just shows the kind of opportunities that uh, are with us you know but if you don't know we don't know and that is why again i do encourage young people you know don't wait until you know you feel like you've got the degrees or certificates to go and look for opportunities start from where you are is you know at school get involved uh you know with clubs if you're in university get involved you know if you're not in college you know do voluntary work at at children's home offer yourself offer your time and that's how we build um, uh, we build ourselves I cannot thank you enough um El Shiba uh, for being us uh, for those that have been listening to us or have joined us uh, this is Intendao University School of Soft Skills I've done other interviews you can find them on our YouTube uh, please do visit uh, the YouTube um Intendao University uh, School of Soft Skills uh, El Shiba I'm going to say oh please carry on I for, I forgot to mention I'm so sorry Kevin no, please, I forgot to on. mention that that those listening should also follow the classroom outside yes, um I did. on Instagram and on yes. Facebook where we cover more of of, of the same thing on uh, on Absolutely and I'll, learning I'll, I'll, and become I will send people right now please do go to the classroom <laughs> outside and do visit the events and El Shiba um so when is the next event that you'll be having So we we have a two part series coming up um starting from this Saturday we'll be okay. sharing the details on our platforms okay and people can sign up um and yeah. uh, as, how much are they if you don't mind me asking uh normally you can uh, pay probably 500 for uh-huh. two sessions or okay. 300 for one session and we do have adults and teen versions of each of the events okay. uh because like i said we focus on on both categories and the, those groups have different different um needs right yeah. for those people that have heard that uh, i'm going to pay for the first five uh with 300 mm-hmm. shillings so whoever comes to you the first five that will sign up uh i will pay for them 300 shillings Is okay oh, Arshiba? Thanks. Yeah, right. that's perfectly okay. That's, thank you. Well, listen, I I cannot thank you enough. And uh, you know, I wish I could we could just talk more and more because as I said, these are things that when you were talking, I was just looking back, you know, back my life uh, since 2000 and 25. I'm like, yes, you know, those things I did but they didn't matter then. But mm-hmm. now you can join the dots. I'm like, no, actually they do matter. You know, they really do matter. And and um, Hey, I don't know. It's, it's not just about academics. It's about who we are as a person. And that is the point where we need to be part of something, something bigger than us, you know? Uh to share opportunities, you know, to build ourselves and and to be in touch. Well, thank you again El Shiba uh, for your time and uh for all our viewers and listeners, I cannot thank you enough for your time. 
and I will see you soon. Thank you and God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.